sing the praises of the Spirit, Son, and Father. Our God will finish what He started. Oh, our God will finish what He started. This is my testimony from head to life. Cause grace rewrote my story.
all over this place.
impossible. Come on. Sing nothing's impossible. Nothing's impossible. You're the God of miracles. Oh. Come on, step out on your face. Sing nothing's impossible. Nothing's impossible. You're the God of miracles. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You're the God of miracles. How we need Jesus. 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 You are faithful and true. Every miracle. Every miracle is yours. Every miracle. Every miracle is yours. Can you lift your hands all over this place? God, we praise you today. We give you glory. Lord, we don't want to rob you of credit. We know that every miracle, every miracle, Lord, the salvation of my soul is a miracle from you. God, every situation in my life that turns out right, it's not coincident, it's a miracle from you. God, everything that I need comes from you. You are my source. You are the God of miracles. God, we worship you today. Lord, we ask that you be here with us. We have felt your presence, God. We, we don't want to just feel you, God. We want you to change us. Yes. We want you to change us. So we leave different than the way we came in. And our mind is renewed. God, do miracles today. Do miracles all across this place. Do miracles today in our lives. God, we worship you. what makes us unique as a church. We are a growing and thriving church that believes in the truth of God's word and the power of his spirit. At Crossroads, we're all about loving people everywhere. And everything we do is based on four things that we love most. We love salvation, finding new life in Jesus. We love missions, sharing our faith across the ocean and across the street. We love creativity, sharing God's love in unique ways. And we love diversity, striving so our church looks as much like heaven as possible. If you're new to Crossroads, we want to say welcome. We hope you feel loved and valued because God loves and values you. At the end of this worship service is a guest reception in our Welcome Center. This will give you a chance to meet some of our pastors and receive a free gift. Make sure to stop off at guest reception following this morning's service. Each month, we have a special lunch for everyone new to our church. It's called the My Church Lunch. You can sign up on our website. We'd love to see you there. Be sure to check out our website, crossroads.church. You can learn about our core values, discipleship opportunities, events, and more. There's even a page to help you navigate our facilities. Crossroads.church or scan the QR code located in the seat back in front of you. We hope you feel the presence of God and the love of this church as you worship with us this morning. Good morning, everyone. How are we doing this morning? It's kind of it's kind of cozy in here, isn't it? It's kind of cozy. I hope you guys are sitting next to somebody that maybe you've never sat next to before. You guys getting a little close with your thighs? That's okay. Like we say in youth, just leave room for the Holy Spirit. <laughs> we don't touch palms. We read Psalms. 
That's a little you joke for you guys. Before I get started, though, I would like you to... It's time for tithes and offering. Can we get a round of applause for that? But you can see we're doing it a little different in here with the chairs, so we don't have envelopes out in front of you. If you need a tithing and offering envelope, can you just put your hand up really quickly and an usher will take care of you right away? Pastor Adam, I'm the youth pastor here at this amazing church, and isn't it, it's cool to be in here, right? Because you know what this means? This means that we are getting ready to go into a newly remodeled sanctuary, and that's exciting. I love that. I love that. Well, if you would allow me to, I, I, I want to pray over today's um, tithes and offerings, so if you would bow your heads, let's pray together as a family. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for just how faithful you are to us, Lord. How good you are, Father. I pray this morning for each and every one of us that we would recognize the 500 opportunities that are in this room. And those opportunities are us. I pray that we would recognize the opportunities to maybe meet some new family members in this room that we had never had the opportunity to meet before. I pray that we would realize the opportunity to strengthen relationships along with forming new ones. I pray that we would recognize that we are each an opportunity to do your will, to advance your kingdom, to be the light to our families, to our communities, to our schools. Everywhere we go, we are an opportunity to speak the name of Jesus. A Father, along with that opportunity, you know what we need. We need a willingness. Because we are 500 opportunities in this room, now we just need a willingness in our heart to obey. And so I pray for a boldness and a courage and a passion to ignite in our hearts through your Holy Spirit to be willing to be your hands and feet and to speak your name regardless of where we're at, whether it's the event center, whether it's the sanctuary, whether it's at On Cue, Love, 7-Eleven, our homes, our jobs, wherever it may be, may we have a willingness to be obedient in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you so much for the opportunity to be here. Thank you so much for the seeds that you give us to sow in your name. Thank you so much for the fruit of those seeds, which is literally the sanctuary that's being remodeled right now, Father. It is because you are so faithful with the seeds that we are sowing. May we continue to sow seeds in faith in the name of Jesus Christ. And it is in your name that we always pray. And everybody said, Amen. morning I'm doing okay <laughs> this is kind of cozy isn't it guys we're gonna do something we've not done in a while um, and I think being in this space gives us the opportunity to do it and we may just keep doing this when we go back in the main auditorium I want everybody stand to your feet sound guys can you give me some uh, peppy music I'm, I'm a peppy some of a pep hype music 
There we go. You know what? Find somebody, shake their hand, give them a high five, let them know that you are glad that they're here, okay? We're gonna put like 30 seconds on the clock. Greet somebody, tell them hello. Go ahead and have a seat. If you do not know me, my name is Mark Johnson. I'm the lead pastor here at Crossroads Church. And uh, no, my voice normally does not sound like this. So, yeah, we're glad that you are here. So good to see uh, so many people here this morning. Because you never know, when, when you disrupt the normal flow... It's easy just to stay home, but you didn't stay home. Amen. And I will say for those of you who are watching online, you may be at home physically, but you are with us in spirit. You've tuned in and your spirit is connected with what's happening in this room. The spirit of God is moving and he's going to continue to move. We will have an opportunity. Just let you know at the end of service, if you need prayer for anything, we have our elders, our spiritual leaders that will help. They will pray with you, pray for you. We're going to have an opportunity to respond to what the Holy Spirit is doing and what the Word of God is doing in our hearts. Go ahead and uh, turn, if you would, to the book of Psalm. Go to turn to Psalm 66. And while we do that, I've got to um, say real quick, number one, I just want to give a big thank you to everybody who put in all the hard work this past week to get this space ready for this Sunday morning. Um, it, it looks good, doesn't it? And I know some of you are already thankful because we've altered the wooden slats. <laughs> Because I know some people, it was, it was, it'd make you nauseous when we had the full slats. That's one of those designs that we it looked great on as you're scrolling on your phone on a Pinterest page. It looks great. And when you put it up on a wall, it's like, whoa. So anyway, I just want to give a big thank you. And also I want to announce that Ron Hop and Sam Laginu are home. They're back. <laughs> After... Was it two or three weeks, guys? Three weeks. Three weeks of fruitful ministry in Malawi and Mozambique. And uh, soul saved, baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit. Gifts of power and operation. Right, Ron? Amen. We are glad you guys are back. And we're glad that you're back safely. So, 
Their bodies may be here. They just got back Friday night. Their bodies are here. Their minds may still be on Mozambique time. So well, we are grateful that they are here. Well, Psalm 66, if you guys turn there, we are in the second week of a series entitled Unfinished. And the reason why we're talking about being unfinished today is because as we invest in our main auditorium, as we invest in phase one of our legacy renovations, we know at the end of phase one, there are going to be things, if ever I can just try to up here, um, we know that there are going to be things that aren't done. There are going to be things that we need to, that's the kind of the essence of phase one, right? It's going to be an unfinished project. And if you think about it, every home that you purchase, that you live in, every building, is an unfinished project. There's always something needs to be done. There's that old saying, right? Welcome to home ownership. Because there's always something to be done. Well, let's think about it. I don't know about you, but aren't you glad that, I'm an, that you are an unfinished project? Come on, somebody. Aren't you glad that God is still working in your life? That this is not the peak of your existence? That there's more that you can learn? That there's more that you can grow in? There's areas that you can be stretched. You can be better tomorrow than you were today. The Spirit can be in greater operation in your life tomorrow than it was today. Your knowledge of the Word of God can deepen more tomorrow than it was today. So listen. So listen to me this morning. Don't let anybody get you down. Don't let anybody tell you what you lack. You just walk through life with your shoulders back and your chin up and say, You know what? I'm not perfect. But I'm not done yet. Now, I don't know about you guys. Is anybody in here who's perfect? Come on, show of hands. I was just waiting for a teenager to raise their hand. I am 16 years old and I got it all figured out. Me. No, just kidding. You're not done yet. God has more for you. I want to talk to you this morning from the idea of stronger than steel. Stronger than steel. Now, steel has built our modern world. It is a modern marvel. In fact, if you think about it, you know, the idea of the strength of steel is highly respected. Superman is known as what? The man of steel, not the man of wood, the man of rock, right? One of the NFL's most enduring images of tough and gritty football are the Pittsburgh Steelers, not the Pittsburgh Farmers, not the Pittsburgh Dog, dog Groomers, right? Listen, there's nothing wrong with being a dog groomer or a farmer, right? Their famous defense is known as what? The Steel Curtain, not the Wool Curtain, right? Not the Linen Curtain. Okay, so I went, the summer that I graduated high school, my father got me a job as a summer intern for a U.S. steel plant just outside of St. Louis. It was one of the most dangerous, it was definitely the dirtiest, grittiest job that I ever had. And because I was an intern, the department I worked out of was called yard maintenance. Now you may think, oh, that's not a big deal because what, cutting grass, you're, they're maintaining the yard. No, 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 no. Our nickname was, were the yard dogs because we got thrown all the scraps, all the jobs that none of the, uh, the other, the unions, because it was in Illinois, a lot of unions, but they would bid out all the jobs to all the different union departments and the ones that nobody wanted Yard dogs got. In fact, when we would walk onto a job site, it was very common for the other unions to bark at us when we walked in the room. Here come the, 
Here they come, guys. Here come the yard dogs. And within my shift, within my team, I had my own uh, personal nickname that they gave to me. Now, I'm going to let you guys know what that is. I'm going to kind of peel back the curtain and, and let you in in all vulnerability. They call me Pigpen. <laughs> because if, there was a, if we came back messy, I was the messiest. If there was a job that, hey, climb in this pit of sludge, they would say, give it to Johnson, he'll do it. He loves getting dirty. So it was a tough, tough summer, but I learned a lot about the process of making steel. And the process it is a process that requires heat, pressure, it requires destruction, and eventually new life, really, and transformation. Now, this is a process that if most of us were honest, we would shy from. If we were really honest with ourselves, we would flat out run away from this kind of a process. If somebody came to us and said, hey, I've got a process, I've got a journey I want you to walk down, and it's going to require heat, pressure, destruction, pain. You'd say, no thanks. That's a hard no. But we need to learn in our lives to welcome the process of refinement. You see, we're developing a culture of a world that doesn't want to be challenged. Our world is that we're developing a generation of people who don't want to be challenged. At the slightest discomfort, at the slightest pain point, we turn and run the other way. But we need to develop in our lives a little bit of grit. You know what I'm saying? A little bit of that yard dog mentality. No matter how hard, no matter how tough the journey is, we're going to get after it. No matter what the opposition comes our way, we're going to get after it. We're going to keep moving forward. Satan, you just try to stop me. <laughs> we need to develop a little bit of that yard dog mentality. The Christian church, we've lost our fight. We've lost our fight. We stand for the truth of God's word. We, God's word is the truth. Well, what about this? Oh, well, okay, we'll just back over here. We'll just back away over here. What we want to do now, we'll just back away over here. Guys, I want to challenge you. The word of God is challenging us to stand strong. Stand not, not in hate, not in malice, but in love. Love can be strong. Love is not passive. You can reach out with hands of love to a hurt and broken world and still stand on the truth of God's word. So we often think that, oh, well, you know, the people who stand on God, the truth of God's word, well, they don't love people. Yeah, we do. The truth is love. The truth is love. And if I see somebody I love in a car heading for a cliff, them in Louise style, and I don't say to them, stop, there's a cliff coming up, is that love? Well, it may make them uncomfortable. It might make them uncomfortable to know that they're heading for a cliff. I don't want them to be mad at me. Well, then who are you more worried about? Yourself or them? Am I, is, anybody, is anybody tracking with me this morning? What are we talking about here? We're talking about the process of the fire of refinement. And, and in church, we call it the refiner's fire. The fire of refinement. Look at this in Psalm 66, verses 10 through 12. It says, For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. You laid a crushing burden on our backs. Crushing burden. You let men ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water. Yet you have brought us out to a place of abundance. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the truth of your word. I pray that as we open up and look into and unpack your word today, 
your Holy Spirit would begin to birth some grit, some determination, so that we don't run away from the refiner's fire. We embrace the refiner's fire because we know it'll make us pure. We worship you in all things. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. Let's talk about this process of being made stronger than steel. You see, because it's the fire that refines us. It's the, the fire that makes us better. See, our God is a God of process, and the problem is so many of us, we want the product, but we don't want the process. But the product requires the process. See, listen, you are not, the question I have this morning is, are you a victim or are you on the verge? Are you a victim or are you on the verge? Because if we walk through life with a victim mentality, we will always be attacked. We will always be on our heels. We will always be backing up. But when the attack comes in my life, that's when I need to stand in faith and know that I'm on the verge. That God has taken me out through the fire and through water to a land of abundance. The burden is a burden of transformation. The burden that God lays on me is a burden of transformation. Those who have come to ride over my head, ride over his head. Come on, guys. That's strong imagery. But on the other side of that is a crown. On the other side of that is victory. So you and I have two ways of looking at things. Are you being persecuted or are you being purified? Are you being rejected or are you being refined? Are you being attacked or are you being transformed? Ultimately, it comes up to you because there are no victims in the kingdom of God. There are just those on the potter's wheel. There are masterpieces in the making. You are a masterpiece in the making. Listen, I know times can get tough. Those bills come due every month, don't they? Sometimes there's not enough money in the bank account. Sometimes it's a struggle. But know this. The struggle means you are a masterpiece in the making. He's not left you. He hasn't abandoned you. He's right there. In fact, the word of God says that he is close to the brokenhearted. And if you are in this place today and you are brokenhearted, know that God's natural position, his natural GPS location is right here where you are at. You are in the best place for God. If you're hopeless, if you're lost, if you don't know what to do next, then you are right where God wants you to be. Because it is through that difficulty, it's through that refiner's fire that we are purified. So I want to encourage you this morning with three functions of the refiner's fire. Y'all with me? Let me take a drink. Let's talk about number one. Refiner's fire identifies impurities. Because well, here's what happens. I learned a lot about how steel is made. And I had to kind of research and get my memory correct because I knew if I came out and gave you wrong information, my father, who worked at U.S. Steel for 30 years, would correct me. Say, that's wrong, so try to get it right. But uh, how you make steel is you take what's known as pig iron. You take iron. It's pig iron. It's got heavy on carbon. And you take that and you take some scrap steel and other some materials and you melt it to 3,000 degrees. 3,000 degrees. Now let me tell you, working at U.S. Steel is one of those places, you know, you got the board that's like 100 days since the last. It was one of those places that constantly... Go back to zero. Because yeah. it's a very dangerous place. And they would heat the steel, this iron, to 3,000 degrees. And during this process, the first thing that would happen is when the iron got melted, 
something would rise to the top and they would call it slag. It sounds as lovely, it's as lovely as it sounds. Slag. And it was all the impurities from the iron. And it would rise to the top and these giant labels of molten iron. And they would just scrape it off. I found it interesting that the first thing in the process of refinement are that um, impurities are exposed. The refiner's fire identifies impurities in our life. Daniel 11.35 says, Some of the wise shall stumble so that they may be refined, purified and made white until the time of the end, for it still awaits the appointed time. If you find yourself in a season of purification, the first thing that you and I need to understand is that when God turns the fire on in our lives, when he takes us through that season of purification, the first thing that's going to happen are impurities will rise to the surface. And it's not always a good look. All right? When that phone call comes in, or that, that person, you know, everybody's got, everybody's got button pushers in their life, right? You know, different personality types, right? You know what I mean? You know, me, I'm, some people are very concrete, sequential in the way they think. They're very left-brained. Me, kind of, how do I describe this? If you would, as a kid, go to the uh, the Golden Corral or the Old Country Buffet. Remember, everybody remember Old Country Buffet? And as a kid, you're just dumping everything on top. You know, you don't. If it looks good, poof, there it goes. So you got this pile of like mashed potatoes and and corn and and spaghetti and and teriyaki chicken and. And ice cream and, and, and that chocolate mousse fluff thing that's all there. And as a kid, I, I don't know about you, but I would just take my fork and just run it all through. <laughs> just come out with this Picasso-looking painting. It's all good. It's kind of how my mind works. My mind is a buffet platter from Old Country Buffet. You know, so I know sometimes the, those two different personality types don't always mesh. We all have people in our life. We have personality types situations that are button pushers and isn't it amazing how quickly the slag rises to the top you know you know what i'm saying and you find yourself saying things you find yourself with an attitude you find yourself with fighting thoughts that if you are honest if you're vulnerable today it's not a good look on you right but we need what we need to understand this and and Our emotions, and I've said this before, but it's, it's, it bears repeating. Our emotions are, li are like a roof. See, roofs are not meant to contain or hold water or block water. A good roof will process water through. Because the quicker the rain gets from the top of the roof down to the ground, the better it is. If you block or hold water, then water eventually will find a place to go, and that's when you have roof problems. So many, many of us treat our emotions, they treat this slag like we try to bottle it up. Oh, I don't like that. we got to bottle up and push it back down. What happens? It doesn't get rid of that. What we have to do is we have to learn to let the Holy Spirit purify us and scrape those away. We gotta process through that. Process through those those thoughts. We gotta process through those temptations. Satan will come and tempt you with different things, and everybody has different pain points. Now they have different weak spots in their armor. But if you can allow the Holy Spirit to identify those weak spots, then you can process and move those through and get rid of them. You get what I'm saying? If we block them, they stay there. If we say, no, no, we can't, no, no, we can't. No. We're not going to, no, 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 we can't even think about it. No, 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 that's not how we, that's not how it operates. 
how it operates. When you get those thoughts, when you get those, those that slag that rises to the top, that's when you got to stop and understand, Holy Spirit, refine me. Let your fire refine me. Let me process these and get, get them through and get them out. Get them on, get on the other side of it. Are y'all with me today? But we have to be intentional on the forefront. We've got to be in prayer. We've got to be in his word. So when those impurities, when that slag rises to the top, we can let the Holy Spirit process him through so we can get on the other side of it. Hebrews 12, 1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, every impurity, everything that weighs us down, everything that blocks us, everything that distracts us, everything that keeps us off target. Guys, listen. Life is too short to wander through life without a target, without a purpose. God has divinely created you for kingdom purpose. Because we're not here every Sunday morning just so we can put our nice clothes on, put my nice plaid pants on. It's either church or the golf course, one or the other look nice and smile at each other and learn to make better decisions. That's not what this is all about. This is not a lion's club. Amen. You were created for divine kingdom purpose. And we, time's too short for us to just wander and waste years. We got to lay aside every weight. You got to lay aside that bitterness you've been carrying. You got to lay aside that grief. You got to lay aside that fear, that anxiety. You got to lay aside that pride. You got to lay aside all of that. Lay it all down. Why? Because it's just weighing you down. And it gets heavy. Doesn't it get heavy? I feel that y'all just walk through life spiritually like a bunch of Westmore high school students. Because they don't, isn't that. Most of them don't get lockers. So they carry down the don't, right guys, Westmore students? They don't get lockers. So they just carry their backpacks. Poor Naomi Eden. Sometimes I'll see her come in at school and she's got her backpack is literally like this, like this deep. And she's walking like this, like, like Quasimodo, going, I don't know what I'm going to do. I need a chiropractor. Don't we realize some of us are walking through life spiritually like that? I don't know, just hanging on till the Lord comes. Let's get rid of that so we can run the race that God has set before us. The next thing that the refining fire does is it carries the catalyst. It carries a catalyst. You see, you take the iron, you heat it up to 3,000 degrees, you remove the slag, and then what happens is they inject a steady stream of pure oxygen. The furnace is called a basic oxygen furnace. And then they also introduce more carbon into the iron. And in the flow of oxygen and carbon start to make the change in the iron. See, the iron can't make the change on its own. Malachi 3.3 says, He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he will purify the sons of Levi's and refine them like gold and silver. They will bring offerings and the righteousness of the Lord. It is the Holy Spirit that refines us. It's not just a matter of good thoughts, positive thinking. It's the Holy Spirit that refines us. And he will inject catalysts into our life to help refine us. But we have to be willing to accept that catalyst. The catalyst forces change. The catalyst forces discomfort. And through the discomfort, change comes. So when you have moments and seasons in life where you find yourself uncomfortable, stop and ask the Holy Spirit, what catalyst are you introducing into my life? I mean, 
the, the basic analogy is this, the, the whole process, think of this, of, of weightlifting, building muscle is this, you go somewhere and you lift a heavy object until your muscles fail, until they break down. The older I get, the quicker that, that process happens. And bad boys break down quick. Right? I can't spell weightlifting without getting sore. Oh, back. Oh. But those muscles have to fail. And then what happens? Your body kicks in. And those muscles are healed. They're rebuilt stronger from the memory of the failure. Come on, this is good. This is good. Failure serves as a reminder to make us stronger. Don't run from your failure. Don't run from your failure. We all fail. We all mess up. We all miss the mark. Don't run from your failure, but let the Holy Spirit use that failure as a catalyst so you can grow stronger. So he can build you up. It's the catalyst that, that brings the change. The iron can't do it on its own. Allow the power of his word and his Holy Spirit and the presence of God to be the catalyst. But are you willing to open your eyes to identify a catalyst when it comes into your life? Is it a catalyst or an inconvenience? See, we oftentimes say, oh, it's an inconvenience. I don't want to deal with that. No, no, no. Let it be a catalyst. The third thing. Fire doesn't just reinforce, it transforms. It transforms. This is very interesting. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> I had a job uh, at, at U.S. Steel that I would have to do. We would have to go and clean out the reheat ovens. Now imagine, imagine your oven, but about 40 feet wide and about 100 feet or so deep. It was a giant oven. And, and I remember standing, because what we'd have to do is we have to come in with a wheelbarrow and a shovel and clean up the, the ash, the, the burnt stuff. I had to clean the oven. So they would cool it down to a brisk 130, 140 degrees. We would, have to, we would have to wear wooden soles on our shoes because if you stood still with the rubber, it would, it would melt the rubber. And I remember standing there and that wood would heat up. And you'd be like, oh, it's hot. My feet are hot. You couldn't tell. And then they would have these long running um, beams throughout. And I looked at it and I was like, what are these beams for? And then I realized... It's an oven grate for the steel to sit on. I was in a giant oven. Made me feel all kinds of warm and cozy. But the interesting thing about this was they would heat the iron to 2,500, 3,000 degrees, and it would melt the iron completely, break it down, destroy the iron. But what emerged wasn't refined iron. It wasn't purified iron. It was steel. It was something new. It had transformed in the process. And you could heat steel to 3,000 degrees and it wouldn't melt because it was now stronger. It was a different material. It was made of different stuff. So what they would do is they would, they would pour out the steel into giant slabs and then they would put it in the reheat ovens and heat it up to the same temperature and it would just make it pliable. And they'd bring it out and then they would roll it out into giant rolls based on what the customer wanted. I found it interesting that the heat that destroyed the iron only made the steel pliable. Come on, somebody's getting that this morning. Somebody's getting that this morning. The heat that destroyed the iron earlier in the process, later in the process, only served to make it pliable. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to be destroyed. I want to be pliable in the hands of God. 
So what I need to do is I need to grow. I need to strengthen myself and strengthen my faith. That way, when I come on out on the other side of whatever that obstacle is, whatever that fight is, whatever that season is, when I come through on the other side, I'm, I'm made of sterner stuff. I'm made of a different material. I don't just come through reinforced. I come through new. The Word of God says that you are a new creation. New creation. Guys, that's what this is all about. It's about new life. There is new life in Christ today. And if you don't know that, and if you haven't accepted Him, know that there is new life in Him. You can be made new. And the things that broke you down in the past will not break you down in the present. The things that destroyed you in the past will not destroy you now. Why? Because you're made new. But we have to allow the refiner's fire. We've got to be willing to stand in the face of the fire and the heat and the pressure. Diamonds are forged through a process of pressure. Grapes produce the sweetest juice and wines through a process of pressure. Don't run from the pressure. Don't run from the fight. Don't run from the obstacles. Because it is the pressure that lets you know you're in the middle of a process. I'm going to give a quick illustration. It's geared to you guys, okay? And some, some of you dads out there, you'll get this too. My kids loved a video game. Don't get me wrong, I like the video game too. But I used to play back in the day a game called Halo. Anybody? Halo, Halo, Fins, JR. Some of you go, come on, where my dad's at? No? I didn't thank you. There we go, yeah, okay. I knew I was going in the right direction when I kept coming across enemies. When I found myself running around with no opposition, when things were easy, I knew I was not going the right way. I was off target. I was off where I needed to go, and I could not finish that level. I could not finish that area. You guys getting me over here? Until I went the right way, and I knew I was going the right way when I kept encountering the enemy. If you find yourself encountering the enemy time and time again, you need to rest and you need to have a little bit of joy knowing that you're going the right way. Because if you're going the wrong direction, guess what? Satan don't care. He don't care. He doesn't want to fight against people who are already headed to where he's at. I want to be somebody that faces the opposition, right? And I know it's hard. I know it's difficult, but we've got to develop that grit. We've got to understand that this is a part of a process. This is a part of the refiner's fire. And I'm going to step through it. I'm going to be able to come through this transformed, transformed by the refiner's fire, transformed. First Peter 5.10 says, And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. It's God who establishes us. It's God who strengthens us. It's God who restores us. It's God who sets our feet on a solid rock. It's God who elevates us. It's God who opens up the, the, the velvet rope to the greater room and greater realm of his glory. It's God. But you got to be able to walk through. It's something new. A new creation with new possibilities. So this morning as the worship band comes and prepares for a time of response, I want to encourage you, don't fear the fire. Don't run from the fire. Listen, the word of God says that the rain falls on the just and the unjust alike. Listen, whether you serve God, whether you believe in God, whether you don't serve him, and are the staunchest atheist, you will suffer and you will come across hardships in this life. 
It's just the reality of, of existence. I don't know about you, but if I'm going to suffer, if I'm going to do it anyway, I might as well do it with purpose. You know what I mean? I might as well do it as a, as a part of a process. I might as well do it with the Holy Spirit linked arm with me and guiding me and helping me and being my partner through this. I might as well have it accomplish something. The Word of God says that, that the sufferings and the trials that we face are performing a peculiar weight of glory that we don't understand. There's no such thing as a meaningless accident. There's no such thing as a meaningless tragedy. It all has meaning. God is working out meaning in your life. Even if you can't see it, you may not be able to see it this side of heaven. But it's not meaningless. It's a process. It's a process of refinement. It's the fire of God that is strengthening us. That is identifying the slag, the junk, the things in our lives that need to be processed through and swept away. It's a process, the fire, that introduces the catalyst of change. The Holy Spirit in His presence changing us from the inside out. And it's the fire of God that transforms us. It doesn't just make us better, but makes us a new creation. I want to be made new. So if everybody would, could you stand to your feet today? Don't fear the fire. Some of you, you're in this place and you you came in, you barely got here. There's that saying, I flew in on a wing and a prayer. I often say I flew in on a broken wing and a stuttering prayer. That's how bad mine, you know. Some of you may be feeling that way. You're at the end of the rope. You're at the end of the rope. Know this. Know this. There's a God in heaven who is real. And he wants to walk through the fire with you. When the three Hebrew children were thrown into the fire, the king looked and saw a fourth in the fire. God didn't save them from the fire, but he walked through the fire with them. God is with you, and the fire is doing a refining. The fire is doing something. Let the fire work in your life. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, before we enter into a time of response, I want to ask today, are you in this place? And you just, you're, you're at your wit's end. And you know, you know, you need to give your life to Jesus Christ. Let me say this before I ask for hands to be raised. At the, at the beginning of the year, we set a goal for 100 baptisms and salvations. We had a little tracker and made the Crossroads logo behind the um, sound booth. Last week, 109. Finished out. What I love about that is every piece of wood on that logo tells a story. You have a story in this place. You have a story that, that brought you to this place and God wants to be the author of your story. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, are you in this place? And you say, I want Jesus to be the Lord of my life. I want him to be the author of my story. Maybe you're praying this prayer for the first time or the first time in a long time. Know that salvation is for you. If that's you, would you raise a hand so we can pray with you today? Yes, we got a couple. Yes. Anybody yes, else? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to pray all across this place. I want everybody, we're all just going to pray. I'm not going to do a repeat and respond thing. But it's very simple. The ABCs. Accept. That I've messed up. Believe. Believe that Jesus Christ died and rose again and confess him as the Lord of my life. Let's all pray together. Heavenly Father, we just pray right now. I pray for those hands that went up. I pray for the, thank you for the courage, the courage to raise hands and, and 
cross that line of faith and admit, I need Jesus as the Lord and Savior of my life. So Lord, we accept, we accept that we've messed up, we've missed the mark, we've sinned. Those sins bring consequences, we accept that. But we believe that you sent your son Jesus to live a perfect life and to take those consequences for us so we don't have to face the consequences of our own sin. And we confess that Jesus is the Lord of our life. He's the King, he's the author of our life. But we turn everything over to him to lead us and guide us. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If I would, every, every head bowed and every head closed. So the challenge this morning is are you walking through the fire? Are you, are you, are you facing opposition? Are you facing heartbreak? Are you facing anxiety? Are you facing fear? Know this, you don't have to do it alone. God is with you. And it's that fire, if you will let it, if you will let the Holy Spirit, He will turn that fire that feels like it's consuming you into a refiner's fire. So that you will be refined as silver and gold. So I'm going to pray one more prayer, and then we're going to enter into our response time. We talked about this some last week. We're going to have elders. In fact, I'm going to have some of my elders go ahead and make, make their way. They'll be here to pray with you. We have altars, both in the back and here by the stage, for you to come and pray. We've got elders that, are, that want to administer communion with you if you want to do that. But this is a time to respond. The worship band is going to enter into a song. So whether it's at your seat or down here at the front, this is our time to make it personal. This is our time to make it real, to respond to the Word of God. Let the Holy Spirit do more in a moment than I could on my best day preaching my best message. That's what it's all about. Heavenly Father, we just come before you today. We glorify you. We praise you. We pray right now. Oh God, we're going through the fire. We need your presence in the midst of the fire. Let your fire refine us as we respond to your word, as we come down front, as we worship at our seat, as we raise our hands, as we bow our hearts. Holy Spirit, encounter us today and let your fire refine us. We thank you for all this. We glorify you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you come? Would you respond to the Holy Spirit today? Oh 
Michelangelo is known for famously saying when he was asked about the sculpture of David and how he created it, he said, the masterpiece was in the stone. I just had to let it out. Come on. The masterpiece is in you. We just need to let the master's hand let it out. Come on, let's sing that again with our hands raised and let's let's place ourselves in the master's hands.
me all across this place just for the next few moments. Just thank God. And just pour out our love, pour out our praise. God, you are good. You are good. You love us. You didn't leave me. You didn't leave me. When I messed up, when I fail, you pick me up, you dust me off, and you put me back on the wheel. You put me, even when I'm in the fire, when I'm going through it, I know your presence is with me. You didn't, you'll never leave me or forsake me. Even when I deserve it, you won't leave me or forsake me. Thank you, God. We worship you and we praise you. Thank you, Lord. All we want is your presence. All we want is your presence. Any obstacle, any difficulty, any trial is nothing when you're with us. Any obstacle be over, can be overcome when you're with us. Thank you for this. We glorify you in Jesus' name. worship band is going to continue to play our elders are going to stay up here for a few moments like I said if, if you want to take communion with an elder have them administer that to you as a spiritual contact point they're available if you need anybody to pray with you we're available just outside our space here um, in our welcome center we have a guest reception if you are new to Crossroads listen I would love to meet you We've got a gift for you. We've got, I think we got cookies. Everybody loves cookies. But we would love to meet you um, at our guest reception happening in our welcome center. God bless you. Altars are going to remain open. Elders will remain here to pray with you. But you are dismissed. Have a wonderful day in the Lord. And we'll see you on Wednesday night in here for Family Fuel. Thank you so much for worshiping with us online and joining us. If you have a comment or a prayer, make sure and click that little raised hand at the bottom. And as always, make sure to like and follow us on social media, Crossroads OKC. See you next time.